welcome back to another episode of Frame Lake Stories. Uh, we are just just so tickled with all of the opportunities we have to visit with people about uh, exactly that, the stories that come out of this special place in the world. And this week, we're really excited to have uh, Steve Walters with us, who is not a Crane Lake resident, but after all of these years, certainly could be. Um, Steve works uh, in software now down in White Bear Lake, but grew up in Hibbing. Uh, a little affinity and a little similarity to myself. So we, we've had a lot, of, a lot of stories to share, but Steve, we really appreciate you coming on to talk about all of the great things that have happened in your lifetime at, up at Crane Lake. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, Crane Lake was a major part growing up. You know, my, my family's been going up there probably since the 50s, uh, starting with my grandfather and his friends. They'd go from Crane Lake up to Lac La Croix and um, you know, catching walleyes. And then my dad and his brothers loved it up there. So I've been going up there ever since I was a kid, two, three times a summer, um, you know, staying at all the different resorts and campgrounds and, uh, you know, going up and fishing in the gorge and hiking. And yeah, so we, we it's been a major part of our lives. Um, even, uh, even my, you know, bringing my kids up there, so yeah, I think I can count on one hand, you know, the number of times that we haven't made it up there for at least a weekend. That's awesome. That's that's one of the things that I, I think has been fun about, you know, just really honing in on a certain area like Crane Lake and kind of learning the stories is, is thinking about the generational part and how you are probably one of so many folks that have you know, that went there as a child um, with their parents and or grandparents and now are taking their own kids. And, you know, it's, it's, you just, it's such a place that you want to just continue the tradition of allowing your kids to experience the things that you did. And I, I think of that myself, um, leaving Hibbing and going up to Crane Lake or Namakin where we spent a lot of time um, and all of the adventures, you know, hiking around on islands and finding blueberries and, and just the adventure of being there and now seeing my young kids do that. Uh, I'm sure you, you revel in that and, and kind of cherish that as well. Yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to kind of have that multi-generational experience where like I can remember camping, at, you know, King Williams Narrows with my dad and my uncle and my older sister and going fishing and you get bears running around and you got all these different adventures. And then you know, fast forward to my kids and we're staying at, um, you know, we're staying at the different resorts like Scott's and, you know, the kids are playing and running around on the beach and they're getting to know the dogs that the different resort owners have. I mean, they still talk about Ruby Puppy, which was one of the dogs up there and, you know, fishing from the dock and, you know, watching the, the seaplanes, you know, the, the water planes come in and out. Uh, you know, it's really cool to be able to have that my set of memories and then start looking at it again through their eyes as they're experiencing, you know, walking, hiking up to the gorge for the first time and looking down and their eyes are all big where they're watching all the water rushing in. And I, you know, you can kind of see them experience that, that flutter feeling in their stomach as they're looking over the edge. And I remember, you know, when I was first going up there when I was a kid. So yeah, it's been really, it, it, it's been really cool to share that with, you know, to have the experiences that I had with my family when I was a kid now being able to share that with all my kids. So, yeah. And you know, this, this generation, you know, our kids now growing up, you and I are close in age and our, our kids are relatively close in age um, to see them experience something that, you know, time kind of stands still to a certain extent there, the experiences that you and I had, um, we weren't carrying around cell phones and taking pictures, but it seems like kids get there and it, 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 it's, uh, it could be a hundred years ago and, and they are experiencing some of the same things, which, you know, when you get back to society, if you will, uh, away from Crane Lake and back to cell service and all of the, the amenities that we, you know, that we have in our world right now, um, to, to go there and get away from all of that and see young people, especially experience you know, the wilderness and the adventure, I think is just one of the really cool things that hopefully will just continue throughout time and through through more generations in that area. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. It's one of the things that I really love about the Crane Lake area and, and what makes it so appealing to me is that you've got enough amenities to have some comfort, but you also have the ability within five minutes, you're away from everything. Right. You know, you're able to you want to be alone when you're fishing with your family, you want to go on a hike, you want to, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, you can unplug and you can get away from all this other stuff. Um, you know, like you talk about with screens and, 
you know, just day to day life, everything's so gotten so busy and it's great to just sit there and you can almost see when that kind of tension leaves. Mm-hmm. You, and that's one of the things that's so awesome is we'll, you know, be sitting out in the boat and you're, and you're just fishing for a while with the kids. And then all of a sudden you see them kind of that the, they get, they stop with the antsy, you know, when they're littler, you know, they stop the antsy and now they're taking it in and their eyes get a little bit bigger and they're like, now they're seeing it. They're seeing the turtles on the log. They're seeing the deer as they come up to, you know, drink from the lake and they, they see the birds and now they're starting to notice and you see them kind of hit that rhythm with, with uh, nature and you hit that, hit that kind of rhythm that you can't get, you know, really um, with the hustle and bustle of everyday life. So I, I love that part of, of going up there. And that's a big reason why we keep going back. Yeah, it, for sure. I, I've observed, you know, not only my kids, but you know, other young people that have been there visiting just in the times that I've been there. And it seems like they get to a certain point where they realize that all of the technology that, you know, you're not going to probably have great cell service and they get to a kind of a break, not breaking point, but a point where um, they become so content and just peaceful with the fact that that stuff is not in the game right now. And they can like, you know, like you said, enjoy so many of those things that it just that, that make the place beautiful, which is really, really awesome. Um, yeah, I love that fact. I, I love that when you see them kind of, they, they kind of connect and they kind of connect with, you know, Crane Lake and nature and the, and, the, and the rhythm of everything. And you see them now they're, instead of being agitated or, you know, antsy, now they're at the point where they're, they're going along the shoreline and they're picking up rocks and they're looking yeah. for frogs and they're, you know, checking out the bugs. And they're like, oh, hey, they're seeing things they haven't seen um, before because they haven't stopped and slowed down to be able to do that right, right. right. so they start so that that's one of the things that i i mean and we've got uh tons of pictures because my wife and i'll be there with our phones in the background we're like eh, get you know trying to yeah. capture everything because these are such cool moments that you get to experience with your kids and you know good you know as they get older and things get faster you know you want to be able to remember and help help them remember what it's like to exactly. make that connection yeah. Now you, you talked about, you've got, your family's got a, a hunting shack down, um, you know, south of Crane Lake there, but you as a kid left Hibbing um, on weekends or for a week in the summer at different times and talk about some of the places that you've stayed. It sounds like you've, you know, from just our quick conversation before we started recording that, you know, you got to see a lot of different resorts and cabins and campgrounds and talk about some of the places that, uh, that as a, as a youngster, you remember your family staying. Yeah, we stayed, we stayed at a lot of different ones there. Maybe all of them. I don't know. I don't remember anymore, but, uh, we stayed at the old Olson's resort. My parents used to like to stay there. Um, I got a lot of memories of sitting right where the kind of the stream comes in under the road. You know, we'd be staying at Olson's. I go sit on the rocks with my little fishing rods and, 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 catching fish right there. Uh, we stayed with Norway a number, a bunch of times. Um, Beto's campground, when it used to be, that was a, one of my first camping experiences um, was staying at Beto's. Uh, Hamburg's, you know, we'd go out there and get stuff for the boat, especially if, you know, my dad's old 16 foot lun with that 35 horse tiller on it. You know, if he had any issues, you know, we'd go, we'd go run over there, you know, depending how bad it was, we either had to drive or, you know, we'd take the boat and, um, but uh, Pine Point, we stayed with them. Scott's, I've got my Scott's seaplane hat on today because uh, every time I get up there, I try to get I try to get one of those kind of little tradition we have. Um, yeah, Voyageurs would go and eat there all the time. So I, I I think that over the years we you know Nelson's we stayed at Nelson's when I was a kid. I remember that. So I think over the years we kind of stayed with that with just about everybody. And I think that one of the things from doing that is everybody's a little bit different, but they're all, it's all a community, you know? So if one of the things that if something weird happened, you know, you know, that one resort would go and say, Hey, you Oh, you know what? I don't have one of those. Let me go talk to so-and-so at this resort and they get to, or they, you know, if you, cause we, you know, when you've got kids and stuff and you're little, sometimes things get weird. Right. You know, but, but um, all these different resorts were, were so, so ingrained in my memory. And that's part of what goes into the, you know, at the crot, you're when you're looking back at your own chronology, is uh, you know, oh, how old was I then when we were? Do you remember that time when we were fishing off the dock? Uh, it was, but it was out in front of Norway. I think we were at Olson's that time. But remember that otter came up and it was stealing our bait, and you know that you know that's that's part of that memory set is just 
you know, oh, what year, you know, when we were at Green Lake, you know, and we even use that for other our other things that happened in our life where we're like, oh, remember that was that summer that we stayed at, so, you know, that we, that we you can kind of measure it almost. Right, right. Because, you know, that, that remember that was the year that we stayed at Bed Oath and that one storm or whatever came in, or this was the year that we camped on Bear Island or, you know, that it, it, it's such an ingrained portion of our lives and, and event is that, you know, that we kind of measure what ages we were and where we were at with, with what resorts we had stayed at that summer. And I think the, um, it's, it's kind of testament to the, the special nature that we had talked about earlier that, you know, here we are 25, 30, 35 years, 40 years later, and you can remember where that otter came and you can probably remember the color of your bobber and you can remember all of these things like, you know, walking out on the dock at, at Nelson's, you know, in the rain was coming and you can remember those details with such just vivid clarity. And if, if you're like me, I, you probably are, you know, I was supposed to grab ice when I went to the grocery store and I forgot. And that, you know, that was 25 seconds ago. I, I you know, you can't remember the stuff, but then again, you, you turn the clock back decades and it's the things, these really important things that you're measuring, you know, time at beyond and I think that's you know again a testament to the special place that Crane Lake is yeah like we were talking about before creating those moments for our kids those, those moments that were created for me when I was a kid are you know I've carried you know in the sights the smells the fields um we were all camping the one time a big rainstorm came and I think we we're on I, I, I think we we're on uh on the King Williams Narrows camp road. anyways we we had to race the storm back in and we weren't even staying at Olson's at the time, but we just said, hey, we're soaked. Can we, you know, can we, do you have washers and dryers or anything like that? They're like, yeah, we've got some in the back, you know, and that memory, I was like nine at the time, you know, and I'm, I'm over 40. So I'm getting the dad brain going on, but that, you know, that ride back across the lake and going in and, you know, the, 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 the resort people were like, yeah, come on in, we'll take care of you. We'll help you out. Those moments, you know, that, um, kind of getting ingrained in your head. Like one of my best fishing experiences ever was me, just me and my dad in the gorge. And we just spent the day together fishing and the sun would come out, we'd catch smallmouth. The clouds would come over, we'd catch largemouth. There was a deer that came out. It was like, oh, you know, we're, we're you know, it was like a Disney moment. But that was all made possible because, um, you know, Hamburg's had the right spark plugs for us because we got up there and my dad's boat wouldn't, the motor wouldn't go. You know, we weren't even staying at, you know, we were, we were staying over, I think, at Norway at that time. But because of that community and because of that, you know, the, the type of special place that that is, I was able to have that moment and have those experiences that I'm still remembering 20 plus years later. Yeah, it's, uh, you had mentioned, we had talked about it, you started talking about your dad's 16 foot Lund and I, I kind of was tuning out where you were going with it because I'm in the back of my mind, I'm like, Oh, guaranteed. This has got the wooden seats and he's probably got a 34, 35 horse Johnson on the back. And, and then I picked up your, so you continued the story right on. It was exactly the, the same <laughs> boat setup that we had. And it just so many memories as I'm listening to you talk are, are some of the same memories that I had. We had friends that, um, that have a place still to this day on Namakin. Um, and so as a, as a young kid, I was paralleling a lot of what you were doing. I was on Namakin and, you know, you were on crane, but do you, um, did you, did you either as a, as a, as a kid growing up or now even into your adult life, have you explored some of the other lakes? Have you gone up to the Kettle Falls and to Loon River and into Sandpoint? Have you done some of the exploring of the other lakes? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, that was the, the, the big deal was, you know, we always thought it was cool when we were kids. Are we going to go to the pinch dad? Are we going to go to the narrows and see the pinch, you know, and right up there at, at Sandpoint. And um, so my dad would take us up in you know from sam you know through sandpoint up into namakin you know we take a look at the glyphs the the hieroglyphs that they have on the different rocks and things um we kind of made it a tradition for 20 some years now in, into my adult life that we'll we'll rent a pontoon and we'll take off and we'll go through sandpoint loon R river um little vermilion and we'll just fish up and down that side and um you know spend a day doing that and exploring um taking I think it was like 10 years ago now that we took and we went up to an island that my dad had stayed on when he was a kid. And that, you know, talking about those special moments, he remembered it and he would have been, I don't know, almost 60 years old, but he remembered it from when he was like nine or 10 years old. He's like, I remember this one island. I'm like, you remember one island in Namakin, dad? It's only got what, you know, how many thousand, you know, one island in Namakin, but he remembered that one island 
and uh, took us up. And then we got to go multi-generational, my dad, my mom, me, my kids, and walking around on the, walking around on the same island that he camped at with his, with my grandfather. Wow. So yeah, exploring, there's so many, it, it kind of like, like we talked about before is, um, you know, having the ability to go and explore these places and have these moments, um, you know, and, and be able to slow down and do that is, is, is really a cool situation. And I think that it's one of the beautiful things about Crane Lake is that you can do that where you can get away from all the different uh, amenities that we talked about, you know, with the cell phones and whatnot. And then you can just go and, you exactly. know, five, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, you are now in, you know, you are now exploring and you are now looking at ancient history with the hieroglyphs. You are now right. looking at, uh, places and areas and, and, and living histories, you know, yeah. so it's, or, you know, going hiking, you know, you're taking off and you're going on one of those longer hiking trails that are available out there. So um, there's no shortage. That's, that's the cool thing about even after all the years that I've been out there, I still haven't seen everything. Right, right. I mean, it's just it, it just kind of goes forever. It really does. And it's, you know, the adventure and the your choice of what you want to do is, is yours. So you, you've talked about fishing a few times. Um, one of the things that I love about Crane Lake and the whole chain of lakes is you can be a really, really hardcore fisherman and have some of the best fishing in, you know, in North America for that matter. But you can also be a recreational fisherman. You know, you've talked about renting a pontoon and kind of just fishing your way up through the lakes, kind of fish in the gorge. Um, talk about a little bit of some of your your memories. You talked to you, you know you and your dad in the gorge, but what are some other memories with fishing that you've got? Um, you know, on any of the lakes for that matter. Yeah, um, that that I think you hit it nail on the head. Is that the the fishing the fishing experience you want to have is there. Right. If you want, if you just want to go out and have a good time with the family and with the kids, you can you can go spot on and you got an eagle claw and some leeches or crawlers and bobbers or whatever, and you're dropping them down and you're hitting panfish, you're hitting little smallmouth, and you can do that for hours, right? And, and if you want to get into some of the bigger fish, you want to get into some of the um, you know, you, you want to go after some more, you know, more trophies or whatnot, you can do that too. Uh we used to, when we were kids starting out, when casting was a bad word, um, <laughs> so that we didn't end up with more eye injuries, Right. Uh, you know, we would go into the gorge or that bobber, you know, where the, we call them the bobbers, where the buoys are on the, um, on the, on the telephone wires. Yep. And we'd be, we'd just be kind of still fishing. And that's kind of the way my dad grew, you know, grew up with still fishing a lot, um, catching smallies and walleyes that way. As we got older, then that's when we started exploring more like, okay, we're going to go fish the pinch more and, you know, we're going to look and find the different walleyes and, you know, start chucking crankbaits or we're going to start trolling with spinners away from there. Um, and then we've, we've gone up around the corner into, you know, one of our favorite things to do is to go through Sandpoint and uh, Little Vermilion and Loon and we'll just keep working up that shoreline and you know, in the course of the day doing that, you know, goofing around, we're hitting smallmouth bass, walleye, big pike, um, you know, it, it, just be careful not to cast too far to the one side of the river because that is Canada. Right. And the fish come out and they have a funny accent. So you want to be careful about that. <laughs> but it, 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 it's really been, it, you know, the, the, the fun part is, is that you can go in and you can ask people at the resort to say, hey, I'm, I'm kind of looking to do this. Like, oh, okay, no problem. And they can point you in the right direction. You want to get a guide you can get a guide but they're willing to just say hey if you're just looking for you know go out in front of the reeds over here throw you know throw on crawlers or they're hitting leeches and you can be you know with bobbers or slip bobbers and catching all you want yeah um, how about, one of the, how about one of the, uh you've mentioned a couple times you know that sometimes you'd stay at resorts sometimes you'd camp do you have any great like camping memories or camping stories from uh times that you were out roughing it a little bit more yeah, so, well, there's a yeah, there's a couple of them. It kind of depends. Do you want the bear one or the storm one? It kind of depends. Oh gosh, <laughs> tell us the storm one. So we were staying on uh, that I that Bear Island. Um, we were staying right across from King Williams Narrows, where they have that kind of campground, mm -hmm. and they have the camping spot right up on top of the point. Beautiful view and everything. Well, a storm blew in from the northwest. We were staying in the fall, and um, again that that little Lund and the <laughs> 35 horse Johnson. So I, we were going to try and, and the water was up to the seats in that thing. 
So we were going to take it out and run it around. My dad was going to pull the plug and drain it. Well, I was pushing it out. The waves were coming in so fast that by the time my dad hit his third pull, because it was always took, always took three pulls to start it, we were back in the sand again. So we kept pushing it out and doing that and pushing it out and trying to do that. And I learned new words that day from my dad. Um, it was, it was I think I was like 12 at the time. So finally, we just said, we got to let this pass. We went up and we grabbed the tarp and we kind of went down on the on the beach there, uh, just inside the woods so we could get some coverage while we wait for the wind and the, and the storms to come through. And then, you know, we took off and ran the boat around, drained the water out. And then my dad said, well, we didn't go through all this for nothing. We went up to the pinch and caught some walleyes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> a fitting end. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, this has been a great conversation. I hope that uh, it would really be fun sometime to connect in person while we were both up there and, you know, lots of reminiscing. Like like I said, I, I we both grew up in Hibbing just, you know, a little bit at a tiny bit different time, but uh, so many experiences of uh, of making that drive up up to Orr and then up to Crane Lake. Uh, I'm sure we, we could sit around, uh, sit around the, the campfire and you know, drink a couple cold beverages and have a lot of, a lot more stories to share. But from a Crane Lake story standpoint, we really appreciate you coming on to, to tell a little bit about, you know, your Crane Lake story over the course of, you know, your life um, and this whole multi-generation thing that your family has. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, it's been a great time. I love being up there. I love talking to you guys and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll run into each other and um, I'll have to warn you, I talk a little bit more if we do have some cold beverages. So we'll it sounds good. Like we said, when we're up there, you got all the time in the world. So let's try to make that happen at some point. Sounds good. Great. Well, that's it for this week's uh, episode of Crane Lake Stories. Again, we really appreciate Steve Walters coming on and, and telling some of his classic stories of uh, uh, the, the timeless stories of Crane Lake and, and his experiences with his family, um, both his, his grandparents' parents and now his own kids um, as they spend time and continue to, to make memories in the Crane Lake area. Um, be sure and hit subscribe either on the podcast or the YouTube channel and, and continue to come back for many of these great stories. Um, we're getting close to fishing season here coming up in a couple weeks. So the Crane Lake stories will tease you a little bit with uh, with some fishing reports that are coming up. The ice is, uh, is out now on the lake. So everybody's kind of itching for for the, the change of season and the next exciting things that are gonna happen. So until next time, thank you and we'll see you next time.